Hi, my name is Colson Hillis. Hi, I'm Sydney. Hi, I'm Brianna. Hey, I'm Kat. Hi, my name is Shay. Hi, my name's Jari. Hi, I'm Natty. Hi, my name's Sabrina. I don't even know where to begin with my love for Bear in the Church. It was just so outstanding. And I love Bear a Pop Papa because I think the story is super moving and super powerful and it brings awareness to different things that happen. What you just saw was a piece of a video put together by Bear fans for a production of Bear done last year in a church. That's right, it was an interactive production directed by Coleman Ray Clark. And it's amazing to see how Bear resonates with fans even today, 20 years after she first came to the world. For those of you who don't know, I'm Kristen Hange, the original director of Bear in its LA and New York productions. And those of us who were part of that original team as we came into 2020 were like, what are we going to do to honor Bear? I mean, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. It's not like we can produce a big fancy concert or even get on a plane with a crew and fly around and interview. What do we have? Well, we realize that we have each other and we have the spirit of Bear. And so what we're bringing to you in this tribute is a collection of Zoom interviews intimate conversations we had with the people involved in those first productions about Bear, about their memories, and about why the show resonates even today. We know that there is a spirit of Bear in what Damon Interbartolo and John Hartmere created when they wrote this powerful show. And so we are bringing to you a patchwork quilt of sorts. Footage from those original productions, Zoom interviews, other footage that we shot, pieces from Navigate This Maze, international productions, fan art, all of it put together because we're part of one bear family. And we want to honor the truth that is alive in that show and is alive in our hearts today. show started in 1997, late 97. And at the time I was just hearing sounds and writing them kind of as soundscapes for lack of a better term. And I heard these kind of pretend conversations with, you know, what would become a Peter or a Jason or a, you know, pretty much that was it. I didn't really know the story or what it was about, but I knew the tunes. So they got written first without any like lyrical marriages to them. I realized I needed someone to do that. We started out with lyrics first. No, we didn't. We, started we out absolutely with... started out with lyrics first. We you started out with true. music first. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. The whole thing was like composed <laughs> so and then the, the lyrics came. I think I got a phone call in my senior year saying she had a friend who wanted to write a musical. It, it was like homosexuality was at the door. He just kind of blew into the room, and I wasn't out yet either, so he was like, we're gonna write a musical, we're gonna, and it's Broadway this, and, and it just, he just launched right into it. You and I was a tune first, and then you I'm not out. claiming that it wasn't a tune first. I'm saying the original core songs were lyrics first. It's really not and how then, I remember it. It's, I remember it being a soundscape that I wrote in John Amon's studio, and then, it, and, then it be, and then John, this John took hold of it and wrote some words. Boys just ain't like the other. What he came to me with was a loose idea of somebody struggling with coming out. I thought, oh, I'm straight, but I can help you write this. Not since him, somebody save him. Went to New York and walked around to all the different producers and came back and literally think like three days later, he's like, well, this isn't happening fast enough, so we're going to put this up ourselves. You know, we used to record our, our concepts, um, concept recordings at the studio on Melrose that uh, Damon called Suddenly Seymour Studios because it was above a flower shop. Was in a film called Scrapbook that, um, that required some singing. There was somebody in the sound booth next to me going like, sing that again and do it like this. Just really loud and fucking abrasive. And then he said, uh, that's the voice of Nadia. And so I met Damon through that, as well as Eric, as well as Debbie. We were all part of this. And um, so I just started doing some concept albums 
from before we even got off the ground with Bear, before we even started. So each time he just kept saying, we're doing another one. We're doing another one. Huh? I first heard about Bear when I literally heard it echoing from my upstairs in my house, um, coming downstairs while I, where I was editing a really depressing, sort of morbid kind of movie at the time. And it's sort of like, you know, was uplifting in a way to hear it. I had singers like Jenna and Keeley coming in and out of John Ottman's house. And he's like, what the fuck is going on up there? And then I was uh, driving down the street or in the supermarket or in the gym, which was rare at the time, still is. And I would start humming these tunes in my head because they would just stick there. They just went right into your, your soul. When you hear a good thing and you feel like the world should experience it, you want to do whatever you can. So for me, that meant using the connections that we had and getting out the checkbook and trying to make things happen. Hi. Then I go to a party where I know Damon's going to be. And I go specifically with the intention of meeting him, but I don't know who he is and I don't know what he looks like. But I am standing at this party and I look across the room and I see this guy who's so loud and he's so obnoxious and he's wearing this brown and it looked like almost like a, like a polyester thrift store button down, like very tight, you know, he was in his, one of his skinny phases and he was so loud. But I had that feeling like when I saw him across the room, like um, love at first sight, but it was like creative soulmate at first sight. Like I, and I didn't know that was Damon. I was just like, whoa, I just was hit. And then later I got introduced, this is Damon Bartolo. Um, and he's like, well, I heard you had the script, you got the script. And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, um, I have some thoughts. And so I proceed to tell him what I think are wonderful dramaturgical notes. And he's like, <laughs> and he's literally like, huh. And then like walks away. <laughs> and they talk to me again for the rest of the night. Eric stays on the mm. patio with me and was like, well, I think that's a very, very thoughtful, good ideas. Like Eric stays with me. And I was like, I totally watched that. I am not getting this gig. Uh, this is the show is not happening. And then uh, maybe a couple weeks later, John Hartmere leaves a message on my answering machine <laughs> inviting me to copy. I knew... Damon and John Harmier, um, starting in 1992, we all went to USC together. There were a couple of things leading up to the Hudson production. First, there was a studio concept album in 1998, I think, which had a full string section and all kinds of, you know, high production value things because uh, we were so immersed in um, film music at the time and recording with all these live musicians and stuff like that, which was totally unrealistic for real theater. Then followed by the second stage theater reading. The second stage theater was um, across the street pretty much from the Hudson. It was all leading up to the Hudson production. Figuring out how to put that on was, was such a was such a story. It's just like all the all the dead ends and mistakes and stuff were so hilarious. That's the thing about the bear team is that the humor was just out of control. Damon was a force. He used to call me in the morning and be like, girl, today we change the world. God, don't make no we do it at the Hudson Main Stage. Well, you better believe it. It's 99 seat theater on Santa Monica Boulevard. It's like the tightest quarters backstage. We made sure that there wasn't a fire marshal in 10 mile <laughs> radius. We have the biggest set and the biggest cast. I think I described it as a tour de force. The character movement, the scenes, the great music. Even though we were in a little 99 seat theater, it felt like a big, important piece of work we were doing. Before there was a YouTube where you could casually watch someone um, perform very easily and secretly, we would actually just go to karaoke bars to s check out talent. Wow. <laughs> 20 <laughs> years ago, 20 years ago. Back in the times of Napster. <laughs> yep, I remember getting the call from John Hartmere going, we need black people. <laughs> <laughs> you were looking for someone to be the priest. And I remember we went to some little theater. Everyone else had been cast. I think I came in a, a week after rehearsals had started. And um, 
I had done Sunset Boulevard the year before and you asked me to sing Sunset Boulevard. And when I finished, you said, okay, that sounded really great. Can you drop all of the musical theater stuff and do it again and just do it very, very real? And I was like, oh, okay, this is what we're going into. And then I remember coming into the theater and all of these beautiful, what felt like such young people, you were only five or six years younger, but except for Joe Penzone, um, it <laughs> felt like- it You still look like, 10. Yeah, exactly, right? It felt like just the most magical and beautiful place. And I remember getting to hear some recording and thinking the music was so beautiful. And the feeling that I had more than anything was grateful that I was home because it felt like I was home. And at the time I was going through something very emotionally heavy for me and to be in some place where the emotion on stage was even heavier actually was a very healing thing for me. So um, it, was, it was gratitude to be home. I also remember that Jenny Kwan was the very first uh, submission that we received in our casting PO box uh, that was across from my office in Beverly Hills. And I remember standing outside, like literally jumping up and down that, oh my God, we got the girl from California Dreams. Uh, <laughs> you know, audition for us. It's like, we're totally gonna get amazing cast now because like if this is the kind of, you know, if Jenny Kwan is auditioning for our show, okay. I can't even imagine who else is gonna be like submitting and, that again, it was like these moments that I recall where everything just became so real. I think it was like 1997, I answered an ad in Backstage West along with hundreds of other people at one of those horrible dingy theaters across from the Hudson, that theater row uh, space. Mm -hmm. Second stage theater, yeah. yes. <laughs> and we were on the ground floor and um, the minute I heard the song Bear, the music, I knew that this was something that I had to be a part of. And I had seen a reading of it um, also on Santa Monica Boulevard. I remember Judith Light was sitting right behind me. Um, and, uh -huh. and I remember there was cross-dressing involved and some songs were switched. And I was like, what the fuck am I watching? And then uh, Keely was like, remember that thing? You know, they're, they're auditioning for the role of Jason. I think you should do it. Scared the shit out of me for obvious reasons. Um, and so I... But I went and I showed up in trying to look young and 17, wearing yellow <laughs> pants and an orange vest and a white thermal. Uh, yeah. And I think I sang She's Got Away. Uh, I think that was my audition song. So I knew Misha Fister um, through his roommate, Michael Cuneo. And um, he was producing this reading and he was like, come audition. So I got off work at CPK in Encino, smelling like pizza. <laughs> I think I still, like wore my white shirt and my black pants and, and like went down to USC and sang Together Again by Janet Jackson because that's how prepared I was back in the late 90s. And um, I just remember it was just like, I think maybe I sang, ooh, no, I definitely sang that. And then I think Circle of Life. It was very... <laughs> Uh, we, we were using yeah. the USC practice rooms and none of us were actually students. We, we just knew somebody who had a key. We weren't <laughs> supposed to be there. It's just the aura of, of, of this group was just so, you know, it was a lot for me. And um, then when I got the call that, like, you know, I was going to be a part of it, I was completely floored. And I don't think it really got real to me until, like, we went to UCLA. And then once we went to UCLA and we did that photo shoot, then we did the readings. And, and I think the, you know, hearing, hearing the songs, I remember hearing Roll of a Lifetime when John Torres sang it. And I had never heard music like that. I had mm -hmm. never heard expression like that. And of course it was, it was a learning experience for me the entire time. I mean, I was learning from everybody because everybody, you know, everybody had a, a uh, a professionalism about them that was beyond anything that I could have ever imagined to work with. And I had no idea that Bear was going to literally start blazing a trail. I remember like the first, our first performance, it was like only a few people there. And by that weekend, we walked in and it was like packed. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is, this is the real thing. Such a ginormous yeah. set in such a very yeah. small the sharp edges. <laughs> metal. <laughs> we had a big serious. We had a serious uh, set mishap closing night. I don't know if you remember that, but that Wallace and I's choreo choreography went off during our sword fight, and or either I flew into the confessional or someone during the rave flew into the confessional. <laughs> and, okay, it was Keely, and so when I went to go in for cross. Oh yeah. 
the door wouldn't <laughs> open. And it was oh, yeah, you sounded yeah. Good. yeah, and I was like tugging on the door and it wouldn't open. And so I leaned into Mark Ecker Stevens. I wish he was still in here every night. And I oh. said, we have to do face to face today, father. And so it was closing night. And so he came out and he kneeled down and we just sat across from each other and did it I that way. And it was that. kind of beautiful. Wow. You know, yeah. what I mean? it was like we had to do it that way. The door. So that set had that set could be problematic at times. There was <laughs> there were things oh. going on there. Make me promise, God, you have such pretty eyes. Baby, you are all I need. I have butterflies. One connection, one you promise, one religion, one today. Here inside you, I am certain you can help me find my way. Are you there? Please pick up the phone. I've never felt so all alone. Left with paper, courage all alone. Crawl inside and want to die alone. No regrets, I see the light This is now, this is perfect Gotta know that this is right One confession, God I love you Jason, take me all the way Screw today and screw tomorrow Don't go, won't you stay You and me, you and me I be on my back, she knows I give in, I be where do we begin Always in shock that people were just they they were in love with this with this show. I mean, in love with the show. You know, yeah. people weren't coming just to like we needed something to do, and so we saw something in the LA Times, and you guys got good reviews, so we thought we'd come check it out. No, it was the buzz of of the city. So it was it was shocking to me in a great way. Our little theater just could not contain. The amount of people, I mean, it was, there was barely any seats to be had. So then it was just like, I mean, we, sh I, I remember showing up at the theater and people were already lined up around the block and they, that was just the standby line. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say that people were like, can you get me in? Can you get me a ticket? Can you, I mean, what, what night, any night, any day, well, just get me in. I was like, well, I don't, I don't know. We just never knew. And it's just every, every night it was just like full. And you could feel the energy from the other side of the of the set, and and you. I was just saying that um, there was an energy. There was an energy um, as much uh, in the seats as there was as on stage. The success as it started to roll did not surprise me because there was a lot going on in the world at that time. If you remember, the the month after we opened was the Gore Bush election, and I remember you know especially for the gay community there was, you know, a, lo a lot of nervousness about George Bush. And I think that people needed uh, a place to feel like home. And 2000 was very different from 2020. You know, we still have a long way to go, but it was very different. And um, I think especially for the gay community and the allies of the gay community, we really meant a lot uh, to that community and the parents of that community um, who would come up to me uh, after the show and um, would, would say, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional, but like the, the so I had so many parents say to me um, in that little coffee shop behind the theater, um, you know, I, I was upset about my son or my daughter and seeing the show has really changed my viewpoint. Just talking to people 
and then you know people crying people coming up and saying thank you and and some of those people who are friends just i mean how many people do we know that are were just like major fans from the show that are still friends i know a bunch of them like just handfuls of people who came multiple times or coming every weekend uh that blows my mind i mean just to be not only friends, lifelong friends with people from the cast, but people who are just fans who just clamor. Yeah, around that's the show. not something that happens a lot in oh. my experience. I, I I can't remember really any other shows that I've been a part of where I became dear friends of just people who were theater goers who would who loved the show. You. Do you guys remember the uh, when like half the cast had the flu? And oh, the play! We had, yeah, we had <laughs> no Kristen way. and yeah. and like Drew, all the swings Drew in, and, went and, on right. and the lighting, Our yeah, lighting and Drew. Soared up. Yeah, Terry, and it was one of those shove with love. Hey, you're gonna go this way. We all, we were whispering to each other on stage to remind each other which yeah. way to exit or whatever. Oh, and yeah. at, at the end, I remember everyone just kind of like after bows, we all left and went off stage and then like this huge like eruption of yeah. Because <laughs> we were not gonna let any of these shows not be seen. It was like yeah. not, not yeah. I don't think any cancellations happened at all. It was like I, that was the spirit point. of the cast. We made a very little amount of money doing the show every week. And I kept, I've told people so many years later, I'm like, that was the happiest I ever was. It was never, yeah. we, would, yeah. we would have all just done it for nothing. It just, we were all doing something that we loved. And Wait, so- Wait, you guys got paid? <laughs> <laughs> like everybody has said, this show has, um, this is probably the only cast that I know of that I've worked with um, that for the most part, most of the people that were in the show, I'm still in contact with. I still see, um, well, not right now, but usually, um, <laughs> occasionally, or, or I see them most of the time, or I still keep in contact with. And at the time, my son was two. He was two, two and a half or something. Um, and, you know, bringing him to go pick up music, and I would, you know, meet up with Eric. And, and now that I've and now he's 22. It's just, it, it, yeah. it, it, that show took out so much, took so much energy to do. And I think that we needed to escape it occasionally because it was such a, um, it was such, it was such a poignant and important show. And I think we yeah. knew it, but at the same time we didn't because we were young too. You know, it's like you kind of dipped in and out of reality with it because the reality was too much. This show was such a gem in, in my mind because we were all in such a tiny physical space and we were all so young. And it to me feels like family because I almost felt like we're this one organism because you had to be exactly in the right spot, not only on stage, but backstage. And if you weren't in exactly the right spot, you'd get run over by somebody. <laughs> and that kind of like, chemistry and choreography, like mentally and emotionally and physically, we all had to bring the same level of commitment and love, like you were saying, Kristen, every single time. The thing I found before this call was my, a, a contact sheet uh, that was given out. And more than half of us were still using our college email addresses to <laughs> reach each other. I mean, uh, we were babies, the whole group of us, we didn't really have any business doing what we did so well. And it's so funny to hear so many people say they were intimidated by the rest of the people in the room. That's like the most amazing, rare experience where every single person is in awe of the other people working with them at the same time. My great grandmother was the most changed by uh, this show and I, I didn't expect her to come. She was in her eighties at that time. She's since passed, she would have been in her hundreds now, but. She was an old Southern belle, very set in her ways, um, very proper Southern lady. And she came to see the show and she broke down in tears. It completely changed her whole perspective about everything she grew up with and believed. And at the time she was, um, she owned her own building and she had a tenant who um, was gay and she did not get along with him. And she went the very next day and knocked on his door 
and apologized and said, I am so sorry. I have been blind. And you know what? I might be 80 something years old, but this, this show that my great granddaughter was in just changed my life. And so honestly, even if it wasn't just young people that it changed. Kids will reach out to me on the internet and be like, you played Peter. I'm like, how do you know? Who I how do you even know that? <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, and they're, and they're saying the same thing. And, and, and it's all these years later, they're, they're discovering it. And it's, it's so beautiful that we were able to like, just give them a lane to, to, to find. Mm -hmm. I remember, I think, I think it was the ovation awards where, um, whoever presented the award for Bear um, said best little outstanding small musical. And I remember that was the first thing that's, I think one of the only things I remember from being up on stage with Damon and Kristen and everybody was that uh, when Damon said, there is no such thing as small musicals. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's one of the things that Debbie also talks about all the time that Debbie and I talk about is this idea that like, it was the first time that anybody like had any idea that, uh, that you could put surround sound into a black box theater. Yeah. And, oh. You know, it's like what she did revolution. I do not think that you could have certain shows today and the sound that they produced today, like from the black past, even the like, past two or three years, even um, without what Debbie did um, on, on that level. And uh, 20 years later, um, there's just no question, like the Hudson production of Bear um, is the thing I'm the most proud of. It's the most kind of artistically expressive mm -hmm. thing. Um, and I never had such a, a, a creative, a beautiful creative environment as, as that production was. And the things that we got to do, whether they were rational or not. Well, first of all, the music wasn't, you know, typical musical theater music. It had this pulsing, you know, pop rock score, which really appealed to the youth. And um, I think that, you know, the, the ages of all of us definitely varied a little bit, but for the most part, we were kids. We were really re young. And it, so they, I think a lot of the young audience related to us because they felt like we were very similar to them. And also it was a story that, wasn't being told anywhere else. So, you know, it was, people to this day still ask me like, what, you know, what is Bear about? What was it about? And I'm like, honestly, it, it was about a lot of things, but it was really about five kids figuring out who the hell they were. Yeah, I think it was relatable. I think every character uh, brought something for everybody. I don't think it was a, a, a gay musical. I think mm -hmm. that, it, that it really, it was about five kids whose lives were laid bare you know, by, by the end of the show. I think also one thing that I heard a lot that people said to me were, I forgot that you were singing. And mm -hmm. I think that really says a lot about a musical in a weird way that um, they, they were just so absorbed into the, the lyrics and the score and the direction and the actors and the movement and, all, and the choreography that they just, they, they completely suspend disbelief and they're just like, they're just hearing the story. And they're engrossed in that. And when you can, I mean, so I can't tell you how many people said that to me. God, I forgot you were singing. And like, it's just, that's, that's a really cool thing. I think one of the things that's so different about what our show does, aside from really um, following five very different archetypes that we relate to as human beings, I, I feel like it's not very common where you find a piece of art that kids of this age you get to have a point of view. And I feel like um, you get to question God, you get to question yourself, you get to question adults, you, you know, you, you question all these angles that, that we're supposed to as kids just be like, Shh, just go mm. along with it. Mm. You know, um, that's the way God is. That's the way life is. That's sexuality. <laughs> You know, those are grades. That's what you're supposed to be. This is who you're supposed to be. I'm going to tell you who you are. And these kids went, no, no, that's not, that's not who I am. And every one of us had a fight to, to be heard, to be seen, to be loved, to be questioned, you know, challenged. So I feel like this show does that. And it gives us, uh, it gives us a, a mouth to express what's really, you know, in us, within us. To not mention uh, John and Damon and their crazy collaboration, I think is, 
uh, also it's something I can't do because there's, it's so I can't forget to do, forget, I can't forget to mention them because um, I think knowing Damon the way we all did, there's something so beautiful about the way he was so irreverent, so um, in your face and seemingly like um, seemingly a not feeling like kind of cool and above it all. But then in the next breath and what they were writing was so <laughs> heart on your sleeve and broken before everyone and john in his like amazingly eloquent way of kind of keeping up with damon in that way but then helping him articulate that in a way that was um i think just artful and and a, just a perfect timing of that collaboration you know because that i think that's one of the biggest parts of the show is it doesn't come off as it's so authentic each and you just said it really well key like all five of these characters are just like so going through their own personal um, broken, you know, trying to figure out who they are, what they're going to do, how to make sense of their young lives. And each one of them is like, like, uh, I don't want to say dissected, but you just get such an intimate personal glimpse of all of them. And, and it's so raw and authentic and it doesn't feel contrived. It feels honest. And I think that's why so many people, and I've never really thought about it until now, uh, really seeing it from the five different characters and why it has something for everyone. Like you can really see this and grab onto somebody's story. I'd, I'd love to hear what audiences say about which stories they grab onto. You know what I mean? Like which, who do they really identify with? Because it would probably say a lot about them. You watch these characters, they begin at one, at one phase of the school year or, or their lives at that year. And then you watch them evolve and you see them struggle with different things, but it's all about evolution. And I think when people come to see theater or they, or they watch a movie, they love stories where people evolve. I think it's really, it's it, in the eighties, we had, we had the movies like the karate kid, right? Where like he wins and, but there's not a lot of questions. Like it's, we know he's going to train and we know he's probably going to win. With Bear, it was like, these lives are intersecting in so many different ways. Where is this going? And I think that forced so many people to see themselves either in the characters or to remember when they were that age and what they probably wish that they either would have confronted, maybe gave mercy to someone that they didn't during that time. Um, and I think the music and what, and what they wrote, it elevates all of those ideas. Um, and I think that that's just another element of what people fell in love with. It was, it would be funny cause people would say to me, you know, they'd, they come up to me after the show and they feel like, you're so real. And inside I'm thinking like, yeah, cause I'm just walking through my life. I'm not acting at all, like in many ways. Um, so it's like, you know, it was, uh, I had uh, crushes on John Torres and Jenna Lee Green. I mean, I was, doing, I was literally walking through my life on stage every night. So um, it was, it was not, I mean, it was very challenging, but in terms of uh, pulling from an emotional well, Mm. you know it was kind of all right there it's james snyder i played jason in the recording of bear um but i had even before i recorded that i had been peripherally around um <clears throat> Kristen and damon and john uh and certainly the production which uh was probably one of the cooler things happening in la at the time uh and to me a to get to work on it but Bear, I think, is is a beautiful story about authenticity and finding who you are and having the courage to be that person. And, um, you know, it certainly helped me in my life. And then the amount of people that uh, messages that I get from people saying how much it meant to them in their lives. Um, it's something that I'm so proud of and so honored to have been a part of. Uh, and I don't think that was lost on me at, at, at the time either. And at the same time, it was just a blast to work with Kristen and Matt and Damon and um, Deb Lurie and uh, you name it. It was John, of course, uh, the whole team. It was just a, it was a blast. So uh, it was fun and special, so special. And I'm, again, just so grateful to have been a part of it. I remember I did that zipper reading that we did because Dave Clemens called me oh, at, right. my, at my temp job at J.P. Morgan Chase and I was sitting there and he was like, hey, Natalie, I have this role that I want you to come do. We just need you to do it for like a week. You would be so great, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Scampy. 
And um, he was like, but it's like $100 for the week. And I literally had to have that moment, like sitting at my desk job, like eating my life, being like, this is not why I moved here, to um, think like, can I afford to do that? Like, can I afford, I actually just remember thinking, can I, I mean, I'm, obviously I'm going to, but like, how am I going to afford to do that? Like, can I, can I do that? So literally I walked into that zipper thing and I was like, oh my God, like they're in hairspray. <laughs> and I was dying and I was gagging because Caitlin had been in Bat Boy, which I saw mm -hmm. and gagged over and literally was like, all I want to do too. is three bedroom house. And so it's just dead. <laughs> all of these fancy people, because that was my first like level of fancy. I remember like, meeting Damon and John and you and John because John you and I were matched up together you know the chemistry yeah you know uh yeah. and I remember like distinctly that hallway and waiting and and I had mm -hmm. just decided to quit college and so I was like it was a because you were going to a pretty shitty college Julia, yeah, but I had just quit and, and it was really scary because I was like, oh, was that stupid? Why would I quit school? Um, and uh, I remember the audition scene was the um, the the scene with Sister Chantel. And um, and I, I, rem I, I remember that specifically, uh, like uh, loving the team so much, you guys. And and. Damon spoke to me in the hallway and he was like, I saw you in Big River and really liked you. Um, you know, just, just, and he was like giving me notes in the hallway for something. And uh, it's a, it's a really happy memory. Yeah. Just, just being treated like, I, I don't know, like everyone there wanted me to do well. It was nice. And meeting John and being like, oh my God, I get to not only like do the scene, like I get to do a chemistry read with a boy. You know I mean? Imagine that, like, who gets to do that is one of their first yeah. things in, in New York in the professional sphere. Like not only like I was just like able to just like be me in that, in that audition room. And so it's really, it's beautiful. And I got the fucking job. Ooh. The first thing that I remember is the feeling, the feeling that I had every day that I couldn't wait to go to the theater. And I know it's going to make me emotional, but like, I, I just remember feeling so lucky that I got to be part of something that was putting a narrative forward that was about love, was about acceptance, was about inclusion. And, and I just, I just remember just feeling so proud all the time. And I felt what Michael did, which is that like on, not just on stage, but in that dressing room that was the size yeah. of like a small bedroom, all of us, the entire company being in this tiny, tiny dressing room with a sheet separating oh my God, the, the men sheet. and the girls. Do you remember the sheet? The yep. sheet. Yeah. This tiny dressing room and, and thinking, if, if this is the only dressing room I'm in for the rest of my career with this group of artists, I, I'm okay with that. Like, that's what I want. Like, I, wa I want to love something this much and want to contribute, you know, and feel like you're making a difference with your art, you know? And, and it was such an honor and such a privilege to, to work with all of you, like just that entire group of artists. On the first day of rehearsal, and I'll never, I never forget this, you said, this is a play about love. Yep, mm -hmm. I remember that too. And, but it was literally like, be bare, like strip it all there, put it out there. Like, yeah. yeah, dig into all of that shit about how you felt, Natalie, when you were in high school and like, let us see all of it. Go, 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 go. Be truthful, like tell the fucking story. And it was, yeah, it was, it was insane. It was an insane, like, emotional roller coaster that show every every time we did that you you got we got to do a lot every we got to fall in love and, you know we got to do it all every night and yeah and have the like every single you know emotion a person can have and like live an entire life from beginning middle and 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 every single night and we were up for it 
and you let it and you said like yeah. it whatever go like go for it and every time i will never forget i mean <laughs> and like it was i felt you know free to do that and not have to hide behind cynicism you know there was a, a high bar i feel like every night especially you know i i always wanted to be you know kristen to your credit you know it was all you, there was a expectation of you know doing your best whether you sucked or not which i always was afraid i did like there was always like i always wanted to make sure you know that i reached that bar which i feel like was set of of just be your authentic honest you know best there was no star of that show everybody was the star. every because it wasn't wasn't about us the show was the star that's why it yeah. was such an amazing experience it wasn't about us it was about the story yeah. and we yeah. all showed up for the story every night and had each other like michael said i love that you said it that way michael <laughs> we all had each other you know and so you felt like you could take risks and you could dare to suck because it yeah. was it wasn't about being perfect. It was about being honest. I remember sitting there and watching just Caitlin work in the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. me too. Thing of like, you know, just watching and learning. <laughs> I was in the wings for, it happened, it happened. Like that whole song, I was like in the wings underneath. And I think we were always like. <laughs> yes, we would just sit there and watch and be like, yeah. this is yeah. how you do this. I was yeah. like, I was like, oh. slumped, yeah. I was like slumped down on stage with her. like. I couldn't, couldn't look at her, but I just, you know, it was like such an amazing moment of like, uh, when a cast has each other in a way that you sort of like, you're all, you know, if you have each other's back, like you don't have to ever have your own. And it was, it was that thing of like, I just remember being like, these people, every single person is showing up in a way that is so honest and true and beautiful and like, and like, passing this baton to the next person in the next song and like fucking everybody's amazing Sasha Allen insane like Kieran like Jenna honey St. Ives up on that fucking thing doing your song on the outwalk insane every night everybody's so good to have that be with all of you with all of you like and with Damon you know like leading the charge and being on stage with all of you and being all of us so open like for that to be like my first like professional experience was like incredible and like set set the bar that doesn't exist all where everyone believes in something to the point that they like will will be in a dressing room that you you know there's a curtain made out of sh out of a sheet but it wasn't a, ever a question so there was a certain purity to it that i find like has I think been a, a hopefully and in some way a guiding light for me in my sort of strange career and and um and it's like all all these reasons that we're saying are like the reasons why we all in in our ways like go back to the theater you know it's it's, it's a singular experience of building a family and and uh mm -hmm telling a story together that like, it wasn't about money, obviously. I mean, we weren't making a, a living wage, you know? It wasn't about, it was about like, we believed in each other and what we were doing. And sometimes that is like, you, you have to do these things and it's important that you do those so that you can keep your, your pilot light on. I remember the feeling that you guys had too of, of wanting, wanting to achieve greatness for that crazy creative team. They, y'all were brilliant and crazy, right? Like, and, and, and I, I it, was, it was unsettling and unnerving in a really exciting way because it taught me that, that great art happens, great storytelling happens when people are willing to just be in the moment and trust the work they've done and trust the story and, um, lead with love and that that informed every choice I made after that oh no we had just been still having some sound issues we were having sound issues and we're in the opening e nomine patris we're in that and we're all doing our little <laughs> solos and my, I did my and my <clears throat> mic wasn't on and I remember thinking to myself god fucking damn it we have been doing like come on tech like get it together like tick tock how many days like what the hell 
Oh my God, I don't have my mic on. <laughs> I ran to Francesca behind a locker and I was like, I don't have my mic. I don't have my mic. <laughs> and she ran to the bedroom dressing room, picked my mic up, came back, and I'm like behind the thing. <laughs> like it was nuts. Remember when we had to use the same bathroom as the audience? Yeah, and you're yes, like, well, I'm I do. During the show right now, I have to take a shit, and I hope an audience member doesn't walk in right now. Like it was. Oh my god. The, yeah, that uh, the American Theater of Actors. Do you guys remember one night we had to like hold because of like the soundboard or something? But like for some reason we held in like Q point five, which was like the fog. So like we were holding for like half an hour, but no one realized that the fog machine was on. And then like, we all like got on stage to like start a thing and like the lights came on and it was like. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like it was just like, no one could see anyone else. <laughs> oh my like, God. I, I, like, I thought I died. I was like, I, did I die? Like, I <laughs> so I don't know if you remember too, like I didn't know how to play the cello. <laughs> and literally it was like, two days or something, three days. It was like crunch time before the audience was there. And I just remember being like, Kristen, I need an hour with David. I don't know how to fucking do this shit. Like I'm gonna look like an idiot. So I get the time with David. I try and figure out how to do it. And at this point, they don't put the rosin on there because the rosin is what makes the sound. So you don't do that. So then all of the strings, like all the little fibers were just fibrous. And I just started bowing the thing. Dun, 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 dun. And thank God it was during, it was spring. I don't think it was quiet night because that would have been not okay. But it was, it was spring. Lovely. It was spring. Yeah, it was spring. And so I'm playing it da, 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 da. and then I just bowed too low and so the little fibers got stuck in the fret <laughs> and so literally I was I like why do I have a paper towel roll my dog likes to eat them go da, 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 da. and it literally is there and then it's like hanging there and so literally in like a split second it because I'm playing to a track right and so the whole audience it's still playing I'm not. So the, we all know what's going yep. on. And it was kind of that Bakery. odd moment in the audience where Bakery. we were all kind of like, okay, this is what's happening. But then I literally was like, well, what the fuck am I going to do? And I just started like plucking it for the rest of the number. I just like, <laughs> very real, like, uh oh, how are we going to get out of it? We just did this and I have to go on. And now we're done. <gasps> ah, you know. I was fucking terrified. And I also had really spent a lot of time in Ivy's shoes already. And I was gonna have to re-examine who she was because who she was with John Torres and John Griffin and Keely Lefkowitz in, in, in Los Angeles could not be the same human that she was in New York and in that production. And I was scared to have to re, to start over. And it was the easiest thing I've ever done. On our end, it was like, Jesus Christ, will everyone stop talking about how perfect your guys' cast was? Like, it was hard. For, we <laughs> felt like we had to live up to, we had so much to live up to. But instead of being a bitch, it was like, I'm ready to relearn about this character. Instead of being like, well, like, you know, because, you know, that's, you, you, you know, you have a reaction when someone, when, when all you hear is like, how, like, this is the show that like changed theater in Los Angeles forever you know i was and so, so it was like all but, of you guys were like new york actors as, and <sighs> as we were though to you so you know it worked both ways and i and you know kudos to you though for being you were like whatever i'm we're on equal you know footing everyone's starting over you know but like all we heard from everyone in la Dave Clemens, it's like, you don't understand the show is like literally gonna just like sweep the Tony. I mean, like it was a built up to a, it was built up a lot. It's a big deal for me. It was a really big deal to have a, a speaking role in an important show. You both left Broadway contracts to come do Bear for no money. 100%, 100%. Opening night, I had issues with my family. I was a Peter in life. You know, and my mom says to Caitlin at opening night, she's like, you really helped me tonight. Never said anything to me, but said something to Caitlin. I mean, mind fuckery. So, I mean, there are these things that actually were happening. You know, I, 
I had a Peter experience in my personal life and like, like for that to converge, you know, for her to come to the show and then, you know, dry eyed, not care, but then whisper to Caitlin and have them Caitlin say to me, you know, I mean, I, it's like, I remember that conversation how, with your mom. How, how is, <laughs> is um, why is, why is this working out the way it is? It's not the way I thought it was going to happen. Huh? Just remember that like, 50,000 of those samplers went out all over town. There were billboards yeah. everywhere. I remember just walking down the street and it was bear, 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 bear. And, our, and then we were moving into Dodger stages and the costumes Wait, now what do you already, mean we were moving it? Had, had things we were stenciled on yeah, the wall. The costumes were already in the dressing rooms and we were a week from starting rehearsal. And we got the call Friday night that we were not going to rehearsal Monday morning. I'll never forget. Right. with you. Exactly. And I literally had to call Wall Street Services being like, I'm available for temp work. Yeah, Michael, uh, will you tell the story? Because because we were together, right? Yeah, we were together working on something for Joe's Pub, right? Like this you're, you're musical. Friday. Yeah. And you were like, I remember we were like sitting on my bed and we were like, we were like talking about something and like you got a call and you were talking and, and then you hung up and your face was sort of like blank. And I was like, are you okay? And you're like, yeah, I think the show is canceled. There were only like, what? Like 36 performances or something? <laughs> you know, it's like how many weeks did we do it for? It was so short. We did it for such yeah. a short period of time. The reason that we come back to theater is because of the way we feel. And so Bear has so many things of like, uh, there are so many feelings of loss and um, mm -hmm. so many feelings of like uh, being unsuccessful and not moving yeah. to full potential. Um, there's so many feelings of that mixed with this family that was created and this, this strength and this creativity and this freedom. So mixing it with those two things makes it so powerful in my, yeah. in my brain. We never had closure with that show. And no. that was very, yeah, that was a death. That was, that was it, grief. It was. That was grief. When that, when, when that wasn't going to happen, that was, that was. Yeah. It was, it was devastating. And none of us got, got proper closure with that. When we did that reunion concert a couple years ago, that was the closest thing I, I had to closure with that was getting to see you all in person again, you know, and, and revisiting the music and singing it and, Every time someone says they are, they were touched by it. I mean, still to this day, I hear that, and that's like the nicest thing you could ever hear in the world. You know, better than anything else is that you know something you did helped me come out or helped me. You know, not to be dramatic, but hurt myself. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like that. It's people. It was that deep for people. I think. You know, so every time I hear that, and I hear that a lot when I started Wicked, it was like the whole world was Wicked, 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 Wicked. And here I'm going on the first national tour and I'm in Canada and I'm going outside after the show and, you know, audience members that I'm expecting to be like, oh my God, I loved it so much. It was so great. And I were like, oh my God, Bear changed my life. And like, this happened in, in Canada, but it happened all, all across the US that entire year. I had so many people and still people do it. I, I said earlier, I was at a restaurant like a year ago and, and whoever was the, the, our server was really friendly the whole time and was chit chatting. And then at the end she was like, so sorry. I just, I feel like I have to tell you that. And I was, ex I wasn't expecting it from this. I was like, you know, maybe like somebody that was a Sabrina fan or wicked or something like that. But she was like, I listen to bear every day. I have the album and the sampler. And she's like, I just, that show just, it means so much to me and I just wanted to tell you that and thanks so much, bye. Like. It's funny because it's always with me. Like I, yeah. it's, it, I think the way it still impacts me, Kristen, is that it, it became a touchstone for who I wanted to be in the world as an artist. Mm. And what I mean by that is like, we were all making less than unemployment. Like you guys said, you know, it wasn't about money. 
It wasn't about having no. top billing. It wasn't about having the big dressing room. It wasn't about furthering your career. It, we were all there for the right reasons. And because of that, something really magical and special happened. And Kristen somehow found us all and put us all in a room together. And I just remember thinking that I remember feeling humbled by how brilliant everybody was, like just the, the level of artistry that was going on every night. And I think the way it's continued to impact me is, you know, as an, as an educator, as somebody who, who teaches now, the thing that I took with me was what it means to be present on stage and what it means to be in the moment on stage. Like what it means, people talk about it a lot. No one actually, I'm not, I'm not sure anyone ever teaches you what that means or how to do it. And if you're lucky, if you're lucky, you have a great director once or twice in your career, you know, that leads you to experiencing it consistently every night with that group of people on stage. I never knew it was gonna happen with Michael out there. It's one of the most thrilling, exciting things I've ever experienced when I was on stage with Michael. I, I felt so safe and I was like, all right, let's just see what happens tonight. And it was different every night when, when we were out there together. And, and I just followed the feeling because Kristen made me feel safe enough to trust myself to follow the feeling. Mm -hmm. Everything is an act when you're pleasing everyone. to erase thoughts, battle words over deeds, war with such casualties, all played out behind the smiling face. God, I need your guidance, tell me what it means to live a life where nothing is as it seems. Spending days in silent fear Then spending nights in lonely prayer Hoping that one day when you wake Those feelings won't be there I'm so confused because I feel complete with him When we're alone it all somehow makes Sense. Look into his eyes, the soul compromise, remember the word forget, and try to bury something so intense. You learn to play the straight man, your lines become routine, never really saying what White picket fences and a dog, a trophy bride and children. God, I know that's what he wants. But Jason, what role do I play? Am I a savior or a phase? Am I here to damn you or to help you navigate this maze? Where confusion is a crime So you fill your life with sound And if you dance like hell You hope you'll never touch the ground What happens when the music stops? In the silence will he stay One day you'll realize that these feelings Are going away So we drive ourselves insane
Feldman. I'm the producing artistic director here at the Pasadena Playhouse. Most people don't realize though, I got my start as one of the original producers of Bear at the Hudson Theater on Santa Monica Boulevard in Hollywood uh, in the year 2000. Our entire production team were just in our early 20s putting this show together. Uh, and it's pretty astounding that 20 years later, uh, the show has, has affected so many people worldwide and touched people so deeply. It's not a surprise. In the first um, nine months of our run in Los Angeles, I was here basically at the theater every night, watching people come out with tears in their eyes, deeply moved by the experience and deeply changed by it. And uh, it, it is no, doubt, no wonder that all over the world, people are moved and changed by this powerful production. I'm honored and, and so uh, happy to be part of the Bear extended family. Um, there's so many fans and people who have been invo closely involved in the show all around the world for so long. Um, and, and I really celebrate the impact of the show, of the first 20 years of the impact of the show, and know there's more to come. Thank you. Sometimes I don't recycle. I finally nailed my girlfriend. I took some extra NyQuil. I blinked and it was over. I swear with all my might. I'll sing no more. I'm sorry, Lord. Love me. Can I turn to you in my need? Will you take me back or watch me bleed? Are you there? As I fall from the person that I try to be Could you really love someone like me? Boy, well, you better believe it That God is on your side He'll be your strength, your rock, your truth, your everlasting God Boy, well, you better believe it Some folk will act a fool So caught up in hate that they forget the golden rule yeah.
Some extra night will. I'm 22 years old and I'm from New York. I'm 17 years old and I'm from Port Orange, Florida. I'm 15 years old. I'm from Brighton, England. Do you know? Well, of course you do. What it's like to stand outside. I first watched the Bear Pop Opera one morning before school, but I was so captivated by it, I decided to skip school that day. I first listened to Bear exactly eight months ago today, and then I listened to it three consecutive times on the same day because I was just so obsessed with the music and the plot and especially the characters. I know every word of every song in the show, it, it very much feels like it's a part of me now. Yeah, I drove two hours to go see a production of it, and I actually got lyrics from it tattooed on my body. And I fell in love with it the minute that I saw Nadia McConnell, and I went, this is who I am. Watch the girl surround him and he says it's just a I can very sincerely say that it changed my life. This musical absolutely changed my life. It's changed my life. It truly has saved my life. Screw Romeo and Juliet, Peter and Jason is a love story for the ages. Hey everybody, Daniel Miles here. I was the assistant stage manager of the original LA production and I'm also one of the original producers. Uh, so fun story, one of my favorite activities to do late at night after a few cocktails is um, search around the internet to see what kind of amazing bear fan art is out there. It's incredible what our fans create and how much they love the show. Um, so for tonight's celebration, I put a bunch of it together to share with you. So please enjoy some of our amazing bear fan art. This is your Chantel. You know the entire show. I've played through the entire score. I fucking love this. This was my coming out musical. After I listened to this, I was like, yep, I'm gay. I suck dick. <laughs> <laughs> 
Here we go, epiphany. See, light motif, they're putting the theme that you're going to be hearing later on, which is bear in epiphany. I love epiphany. Live by our voices. You and I, not for nothing, you and I is like a wet dream for me. It's fucking hot. It's like, oh, hey, boy, you got a baseball bat? It's one of my pants. I'm not, it's so fucking like, yeah. I love Bear so much. Like, I feel like I talk about Bear, or maybe I just think about Bear a lot, so it's always on my mind. I love that soundtrack so much. I actually don't let myself listen to it as often as I used to because I would end up crying every time I listen to it. Bear tells the story of two boys, Peter and Jason, who are at a Catholic boarding school in the 90s. There's clearly something serious going on between the two of them, but Jason is in denial of his sexuality, especially since he's like the popular jock. It's a pop opera so everything is sung there's only like a handful of spoken dialogue they also revived it off broadway a few years ago with barrett wilbert weed as nadia but this one was a musical rather than a pop opera they changed a lot of the plot they changed a lot of the songs both of them are fantastic but the pop opera is the one that makes it into the top 10 for me this is one of my favorite shows of all time it might even be my favorite above rent and above hamilton maybe those three are kind of my holy trinity and they they rotate on which is my favorite but bear bear has a special place in my heart and i'm surprised it doesn't have a bigger fan base because it really really deserves one you and uh, you take my hand leaving me breathless take a look in these big blue eyes so you'll understand and know why we whisper in hallways i'll be with you always running together forever you and i You're a homo. You're a homo. You're a homo. Now everyone knows I'm gay as fuck. Prank, it was just a dream. Sup, babe. Join the play, babe. That's gay, babe. Babe. I'm gonna be Juliet. The fuck you are? It's me, Matt. The good time ruiner. I'm here to be Romeo. Here I am, bitch. It's me, the best character. All Yale disgust me. Here's the cast list of our Romeo and Juliet play, which coincidentally matches the relationships and personalities of everyone in this musical. A musical? Boy shut your ass up this ain't something rotten. You stand before me, and I barely know you. Is it so easy to leave? Where is the boy who said I was his soulmate? Where is the boy I believed? We climbed and escaped, grown from seeds that you planted. You slew all my giants, ignoring your own. And now that they haunt you, I'm left with my courage alone. It's the game. My hand leaving me breathless Take a look in these big blue eyes so you'll understand And know why we whisper in hallways I'll be with you always Run together Forever you and I Portrait of a girl Canvas of ages The stage is hers Demure and practiced beauty Holding all in thrall Portrait of a girl Object of rumor A pose at play They say she's fairest of them all Paint her in One color ends and one begins Brush away what stray At a finishing touch The rapture cold as a pearl captured the girl. Now the portrait has captured the girl. Portrait of a girl. Painted in 
looks just like you. She'll play her part. She sees that she's a work of art. Just understand I'm taking Paint her in. Watching one color end and one begin. Push away what's stray. There's disguise in her eyes. Add no shadows that dance to across say. her skin. I get down the cries out within her. Much strip bare beneath all the layers. Would you recognize the girl lying there? Sought after, trapped like a pearl. Now the portrait has captured the girl. Hi, I'm Eric Anderson, one of the original producers and music director of Bear. Speaking on behalf of the original production team, it is so humbling to be able to witness the impact that Bear has had on LGBTQ plus audiences for the past 20 years. To those of you who approached us backstage looking for advice and support, or brought a parent or family member back for a second performance, and to the many young people who have shared their feelings on social media, thank you. Thank you for embracing this show. Thank you for helping us continue to spread a message that love and truth will help all of our voices be heard. That is a legacy to which we have all contributed. Every performer, every musician, every production member behind the scenes, and every fan in the audience. Speaking personally for a moment, Bear was a gift, not just because of the beautiful music I had the opportunity to play, but because it gave me the chance to find myself and to find the courage to come out and claim my place in the world. So to those of you watching the retrospective today who may be in the process of coming out or may still be figuring out things about their identity, I hope Bear's music and lyrics are able to provide you some answers and a sense of hope. Whenever you choose to live your truth, however you choose to live your truth, just remember we will all be there right alongside you as your biggest cheerleaders. Thanks again. Happy anniversary, Bear. Remember the message well 
If you hide from yourself, be someone else for someone else's sake, that would be the greatest mistake. Now say goodbye. And Peter, remember, God's got your back, and so do I.